Welcome to Dano on Fire, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. We're checking out Jetwing Columbus 7, and I have with me the Master Chef fame, D. Williams. Hello, thank Danu. You. I'm doing very good and thank you for joining me today on the show and how are you doing? I'm good. Re I'm doing really good. I know that you didn't ask me but I just said I'm doing very good <laughs> because I really wanted to keep this my, uh, name in mind, Diani. Yes. <laughs> What's your full name? It's Diani Williams. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one in front? I'm sure you have one in no, front. No. Really? Yeah, it's just two A names. A gay name? No. A middle, middle name? name? No. Nothing. Really? Adopted child, I suppose. <laughs> Like you don't have like a, uh, uh, like a Sri Devi kind of a nothing, none of those. None of those. D is much cooler, no? Yes, we'll go with D, yeah. I suppose. I'm yeah. also D, so both of us could be D, D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so D Williams, tell me, uh, what brings you to Sri Lanka? I came for a family wedding, so oh, okay. my brother got married last week. So we were here for that. Okay. So and um, enjoying the weather. Obviously, it's raining now. I know. <laughs> I've been traveling for the past one and a half hours to get here. Everyone just goes slow in our country when it's raining. It's just a part of the process. Absolutely. The fuel lines don't help. How have you been managing Sri Lanka? Um, it's pretty good. Um, apart from the weather, a couple of the, couple yeah. of days it's raining. Did you hand carry petrol? No. Huh. We are so fortunate, <laughs> so we had some petrol <laughs> and we were using Uber, so right. it's, it's better, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. So let's go back in time. Now everyone knows you for being on screen, uh, for you know being a part of MasterChef is one of the biggest platforms yeah. when it comes to cooking shows and out of all the MasterChefs, I think the world really fell in love with the Australian one. I don't know why is that. Uh, it has been the favourite MasterChef always. Um, and that's what we also love to see, the Australian ones. Uh, and you don't know when we see someone who is like, I did a chicken curry, ah, oh, that's Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan. <laughs> so we are like, ah, excited about it. So now you're one of those. Uh, tell me about you, you going to Aussie, when did all of this happen? So I went to Australia to study higher education. So that was in 2000 and 2007 right so now it's 15 years I think yeah so um, since then for me like going into MasterChef is one of my dreams to oh, okay. get on to because that was the first um, MasterChef that aired in Australia so it was kind of like seeing those home cooks going into these shows and creating some amazing dishes so that was one of the highlight always for me to get on to MasterChef and um, I actually auditioned twice so right. the first time I didn't have any luck as the process is really hard, right? It is absolutely How hard. How many times do you have to audition prior to getting to that on-screen time? I think it's about seven rounds that you have to go through. Oh. So initially you do a dish um, for the production team. So they will then go through and then just select the um, people there. So then you have go through like an interview process and then questionnaire and things like that. So it's roughly about seven and then they select top 40 for the judges audition. Right. So that's where the um, TV comes in. Right. And um, so you cook a dish um, for the judges and then from there they'll select the top 24 and also there's a twist as well so what? sometimes they'll select the 20 there and they'll give the four for the next round to cook so there will be um, eight of us cooking again uh, the next day to get that four well, aprons just to keep this tv going yes yeah so in there i made the crab curry yeah. which is the sri lankan crab curry i call it yeah. because you got to use ingredients that's provided to you because you right. can't really have um, the specific Sri you Lankan can't ingredients. Like a puna pakudu from here and Absolutely. Go, yeah. <laughs> so you need to create your own version right. of it. So it's kind of like a twist from my mom, and then along the way, I've learned different stuff, and then I've created the crab curry. And also, you can't just take your ingredients, it's all what is available. No. There, so you, they will provide all the ingredients. Right. And it's kind of like tough where you see, like, sometimes um, lime or lemon or whatever. And then sometimes they don't have those because especially when you make seafood, yeah. you need to have all those tamarind, yeah, the yeah, goraka right. and all those kind of stuff. So you need to substitute with different ingredients right. and come up with different ideas to just make that dish. And cooking under all that pressure must be like so hard, like, <laughs> why? It's fun, but like when you just have that five minutes to yeah. plate up, that's when it like, you know, sometimes you might be having a burnt fish. Yeah. and you're panicked right yeah. so the whole camera crew comes okay what have you done and you don't know what you have done so you're going okay it's, it's cooked but then they'll turn it oh but then it's burnt but it's not <laughs> for me it's not it's burnt yeah. it's not burnt so i'm just gonna plate it up 
but that's where it's the pressure comes in. Right. The worst one is the pressure test. Right. Okay. You got to replicate a dish yeah. from another chef and they'll have probably sometimes 70 steps, 80 yeah. steps. So you have to go through it. And some ingredients, we don't even know what it is. Oh, what it is, yeah. Did and you cook at home before? I did, yeah. Because yeah, I learned mainly from my mum and grandma. She's yeah. a really good cook as well. You know Sri Lankan well. parents, no? They won't tell you. They'll tell, mm, in Australia. <laughs> they'll never tell you. No, but I think they probably want you to just be humble. I yeah, think. yeah. No, in no. a way, it's good. Yeah, so but humble that we <laughs> we are just like, did I do anything wrong now? <laughs> but uh, what has this experience taught you? Uh, you don't need to always win. Getting to that 24 itself is so hard. Uh, and when you were eliminated, how, how was it for you? Like, was it like... <laughs> It was like really bad. But you were still part of the team, right? Until the shoots it ended, is. they make you a part of it and all of that. Yeah, it is. But I think um, you got to a point where you doubt yourself because when you get eliminated, you think that you're not good enough or like, you know, what have, could have, should have. And also, that's kind of like, we're like a home cooks and no TV experience. You're going in there yeah. and there's like so many things that goes on and it's television end of it, yeah. yeah? So you just go, what I could have, should have, I could have done this, I could have done that. I could have even won the competition, yeah. but then you doubt yourself, yeah. you know, I'm not good enough. But for me is um, getting into top 24 is like an amazing experience of itself. And you learn from so many different people and right. you meet so many different people. And then coming to Sri Lanka and done pop-up dinners and cooking demos and traveled around Sri Lanka, it's given me a lot of um, more depth about Sri Lankan cuisine and the culture, which I never had before. Okay. So that was really good. And also like I'm putting Sri Lanka on like in a big world stage. Of course. And of course. because our food is amazing. Yeah, right? and you are definitely an entrepreneur for it. Uh, like you're an ambassador for it. I don't know why I'm using all odd words. Um, I wanted to ask you, are there secrets which are with the MasterChef brand that you can never speak about? Yes, that is because you do sign a contract. And also like when you're in that top 24, we live in a house. Yeah, and you all don't have your phones. No. You all don't come to know how famous you all are getting. No. And then after you're 24, even when you get eliminated, you're still on the contract. Yes. And you can't go home until the winner is chosen. No, is because we can go home, but you can't um, skip, speak about anything. Like say who wins the competition and who got eliminated. Until the Because the ends. real life is different to the TV life. Of so you got to understand the TV life and the real life. So are there secrets that you can share with me? <laughs> As in... <laughs> Like easy I ones. can tell you one. The food is tasted very cold. Yeah, like I know. judges will and taste. How do they figure it out? <laughs> it's kind of like they will um, go and taste the food beforehand, uh, so they will have kind of like you understood know, the rhythm. Flavors. And when they say, "Oh, this this chicken is not crispy," obviously it's not going to be crispy after like seven hours of waiting. Exactly, and yeah. they put it in the fridge, like cool room, right? No but way. Yeah, because it's uh, health and uh, food safety yes, is very I mean, strict. Yeah, purging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who is the nicest judge out of the three? The ones who we... Now, of course, they've all changed. Yeah. I like the earlier guy. The yeah. flamboyant guy. Uh, I like uh, Gary Megan and right. Matt Preston. Yeah. And a little bit George. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay, right. Cool. We're going to get into a break. We'll come back on the other side. But just to let you know, we're at Jetwing Colombo 7. And these are some of the amazing sharing platters. I've had them. And these, these are all like bodies and stuff. And they have some chicken here as well. So let's get into a break. We'll see you on the other side. We'll see you on the other side.
Welcome back to the show. I'm with the D Williams checking out this beautiful place, Jetwing Colombo 7. And this dish is what she made. And I'm super excited to try it. So I've already poured my little hodi situation here. Yes. Yeah, so what is this dish? So I've made a um, Kirimalu dish. It's inspired by the um, Kirimalu, which is an iconic dish in Sri Lanka. So I've played it slightly differently. So I've got um, kiribath or the coconut rice on the bottom. And I've got pan fried uh, barramundi. And this is the Kirimalu hodi you've got, the right. gravy. And you can just pour on it. And then I've got a little bit of coconut sambal just to just give to that vibe yeah. of like the kick the uh, spice as well as the lime there and then a salad to go with it. And the papadang, don't forget the papadang. Yes, papadang. <laughs> but I must tell you, yeah. when it's fine dining food, yeah. it comes in small portions. Absolutely. Now, if we have served this, like, you know, it would have just gone to town. So yeah. this way, it can also be in good shape. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And also, like, um, when you plate it up like this, you're wanting to eat more. Yeah. And you also feel bad to take in front of others. Exactly. <laughs> Because it's ain't gonna look like this. <laughs> You're just gonna like dump it all in. Uh, that's the problem. All right. So um, life in Aussie, how is it? It's um, pretty good, but at the same time, it's tough as well yeah, because um, I work three days in a plumbing company as office manager, and then I manage my own business, which is uh, delicious um, spices, signature spices, and I take orders as well. Oh. So the spice range, which is um, very um, Sri Lankan spice range that I currently have, which is the uh, tunapaha, which yeah. I make it there, right. and it's all my mum's recipes. And I would know that I'm lucky. You know, every if you go to every household here in Sri they Lanka, they have a different tunapaha. Everyone got different yeah. tunapaha, right? My sister's Tunapa, she does have not even told me the recipe. <laughs> so that means that is it. That, exactly. That tunapa is going with her. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like a little secret. Everyone mm. dumps in different stuff in there. When so, you make the Tunapa at home, how does your husband react? Oh, he's perfectly fine. Oh, really? Yeah, he loves oh, it. I sneeze and bring the roof down. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the chilies. <laughs> yes, God, it's a terrible experience. We suffer to eat. No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially we love the spices, yeah, right? And true. even like when you have different curries, yeah. it's really hot. You sweat and yeah, like, yeah. you know. You actually struggle. Like you cannot go for fine dining and eat a Sri Lankan meal and come looking pretty. We'll be like, Kondi <laughs> Bathagin. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I wanted to ask you, uh, when you go to the plumbing job that you do, yeah. uh, do you go like, you know, hi, I'm D, I'm here. <laughs> In Aussie, they don't care <laughs> who you are. <laughs> you're just the next door person. <laughs> they don't care they who don't you are. They don't care that you're no. like famous on TV. And no. no, we see people all the time, but they're really mindful. They don't really approach you, even if they say in a restaurant or yeah, something. Just like Sri Lankans, they always say, <laughs> really? What, yeah, they don't like, they don't do the gaga. -ga, no. Otherwise, do you think I can be walking around here, please? <laughs> so they don't really care, no, but yeah. like sometimes you got to say, I was from MasterChef 2019. <laughs> they go, which year? <laughs> oh, I watched all the years, but not yours. <laughs> but you know, here there's something that they're really rude when they say, Ah, oh, you of course have never watched your shows. My servant really likes it. <laughs> and you're like, thanks. But I, I'm like, thank you, there's somebody yeah, watching exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> Such morose people in Avanza. I'm going to so try it because it's what you made. Okay. And it's the first time Please I'm eating like ahead. a D. Williams dish. Okay, no, so just... Do you cook for your husband every day? Uh, yes, most of the time. Aww. Isn't he the most luckiest? Does so he say like, you know, I have like a star cooking for me? No, he just says, oh, it tastes nice, but there's something lacking. Oh. <laughs> See, I clearly destroyed your setup. Presentation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this curry looks so nice. Tell me how it is. Mm. Oh, wow. How is it? Oh. You like it? It's like a Thai curry as well. And a Sri Lankan twist to it. Oh, that's so good. Nice with kiribat, isn't it? Mm. You should make this curry alone and make it a soup. I'll drink it. Mm. It's really nice. Oh, oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, it's really, really good. Listen, I have like... My sister will hate me for saying this. I've eaten her food no enough now. <laughs> so now I have to try your food. It's brilliant. She'll so, be upset. True. So you're here for your brother's wedding. Did you... Like, did you have like a significant role to play in it? For the homecoming. Mm. We did all the cooking at home. So it's like all these big pots. And then, um, obviously, we don't have gas here in Sri Lanka, so... 
<laughs> they had to like you know stock up mm. and um, it was good but it was a lot of work because I, I think we did um, it was five or six dishes and then the big rices because Sri Lankans obviously like, like to eat yeah. a big buffet of course but if you have that in Australia they'll go oh my god we can't eat all of these yeah. But here people love it. So I had to do all this yeah, cooking. They judge you by how big the buffet is. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Brilliant. Let's get into a break. We'll see you on the other side. I have so much to ask. Uh. Welcome back to the show. We are speaking to Dee Williams. And you know, a lot of us think, you know, going out of this country is always the the, the ticket that we need. But life is not easy. Uh, I was just speaking to her about how it all started for you in Aussie. It was a hard drive, right? It is very um, tough when I went to um, Australia because sometimes you think um, on the other side, it's everything is green and you're having fun and everything will be fine. But going there as an international student, you got to start from the bottom. So I was doing like housekeeping at Grand Hyatt and it was really tough because um, it's a journey where like now I appreciate it and you learn everything from the scratch and how you save money and spend money. Mm. But it's always good because um, it just gives you, put the life in perspective, right. how you see it. And they don't judge you, whatever job it is, you're treated equally, you know, that, that whole judging mentality of what we have in Asia is not there. Absolutely, because um, no matter what you do, I think um, you just be happy with it, yeah. doing those kind of jobs. So you had how many rooms to cover in eight hours? So eight hours, 13 rooms I had to clean and then the turn down service, they'll give about roughly about 60 or 70 rooms to turn down. So it's tough if you think about it now, yeah. but then like, it's kind of like given me that um, like, you know, even when you're struggling or when you're doing good, you just stay the per same person yeah. who you are, I think. And you find life within, and which is amazing. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, this is what's remarkable, like going to a new place, finding your foot, footing there, and then finding an identity is not an easy task. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's remarkable where you are today. Um, talking about, you know, when we say, uh, when you're recognized, you tend to get things easy and you are like, you know, I can easily like walk into some place and be like, give me a job. It's not the case there, right? No, <laughs> because everyone is treated equally. Yeah. And they no don't matter, care whether you yeah, are Even if you're the Prime Minister of <laughs> Australia, hey mate, that's it. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, they bend three into four. And if you don't bend also, then you're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> so it's kind of like, even when you see the cops, right? Like. Here I get scared, yeah. seriously, but they are like, you know, you just have a friendly chat yeah. and that's how it is. Yeah, but did you, like, you know, I'm sure if I see them, I'll be like, hello, <laughs> hi, 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 because I'm a bit worried, but now, but there you are just treated equally, which is great. Yes, yeah. yeah. But how hard was it to get a job when you came out of the whole 24 weeks, I don't know how many weeks yeah, you Yeah, the yeah. So it's kind of like tough, Dano, because um, the fact that you're, on a television show and you have to really be on full time in the show so you have to quit the job and then it's kind of like um, I went to so many interviews and you literally had to tell them because the show comes after um, all like your shooting all, has been yeah, done and nobody will know who the winner is and absolutely so that was kind of like tough because you need to tell them because if they find out they'll go your passion is cooking and then you're coming to an interview and saying you're passionate about doing this job so where you stand because um, it's culinary and then admin account is totally different so if they think like you know it's kind of like you're not gonna stay with them for a long time so right. that's where it comes a bit messy and hard but I think um, obviously if you want to start up a small business then you have to have a steady income as well yeah, true. because you need a fallback plan just absolutely in case. yeah oh, well it's amazing and so you're married to this wonderful man who's so calm and collected with nice shoes uh, <laughs> so uh, tell me about him oh, he's lovely because he's kind of like um, all these through this journey because in MasterChef you go like tantrums and stress and all of these kind yeah. of stuff but and he was, was he left alone at home for like so yeah, many because weeks we, um, my brother lives with us so uh, he was with my brother so it's kind of like he was um, the person like you know encouraging all the time yeah. and then you know it's he fine. looks like a very supportive man absolutely yeah <laughs> same 
We'll make him say hi at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, how did y'all meet? Um, on a um, dating website called oh, RSVP. Wow. <laughs> RSVP. Yeah. And then y'all just started chatting. Chatting, and then yeah. um, I think just before getting married, I think we was dating for about a year or so. Right. Yeah. And then we got married. Did you see him, see him in slow motion? When you saw him for the first time? <laughs> no, <laughs> as soon as that was really funny. When I saw him for the first time, we yeah. met up in a shopping centre. So I saw he was walking up. Very Sri Lankan, uh, <laughs> here we go to MC. No? <laughs> yeah, and then I was like looking, and then I said, like, oh my God, he doesn't have hair. I see the photos, <laughs> right? And then I was like, should I leave now or should I stay? And send him a message oh. and say, oh. And then I was like, okay, I'll stay. And then uh, it's kind of like from there it started. Yeah. Hair yeah, is not an essential item. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't fall under essential <laughs> services. It just it it just gives you less grip. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Traction is a problem, but attraction can be there. Um, well, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy that you have made a name, and you have you have your name has reached to so many people. I'm sure your family is so proud of you and what you have done. Uh, thank you for being so wonderful. I actually initially reached out to her while I was uh, during lockdown and we did a show on Instagram. Yeah. We just did a bit of a little chat and today to see you in person. Thank you. It has been absolutely amazing. It's an absolute pleasure meeting you, Dano. It was great because it's kind of like um, when you reached out to me because I was going to message you, but then I was like, oh no, because I don't know the schedule and everything yeah. like that. But it was amazing, like, you know, yeah, to when see I saw you in I was person. Like, oh God, isn't she like, all right, to her now. <laughs> uh, she's flying off tomorrow. So thank you for coming here. Thank you to everyone who is watching. Uh, we will see you soon with another cool episode of Down One Fire. Thank you to Jetwing Columbus 7 for hosting us. We'll see you soon.